Okay, lights, camera, action, ladies and gentlemen. We are officially live here, and happy Saturday, and it feels good to be back here. This is your host here, Sean A. White, and we're going to have a lot of fun here today on Transformation Greatness, along with SME and the Small Business Network podcast. I have here a very special guest and someone that... I highly recommend for you to have a pen and piece of paper, be able to take notes and ask questions because she is truly an expert entrepreneur in every sense of the word. Just to give you a little bit about her, how the way, <clears throat> excuse me, how the way we came across is that we were actually a part of one organization. And so when I looked at her profile, something really struck out. After learning and doing my research, I realized that this young lady here is doing so much, providing so much value and then um, pave the way, literally. There are individuals that say they are an entrepreneur and then there are others that are truly are an entrepreneur. And she is, in my opinion, truly an entrepreneur. She is someone that I really, we recommend for you guys as far as to listen up and pay attention because you're going to learn some stuff and by all means have some fun so before we get started do me a favor if you will if you catch this on the live put in hashtag live let us know exactly where you're tuning in from and of course if you should happen to catch the replay go ahead and put in hashtag replay so with no further ado here we have here the mind elevation keys for overcomers overcomers here we have here miss Coach Miko Howard here in the ATL, Georgia. But I call her Dr. Howard because we have to speak that thing into existence. In my opinion, she's a doctor, whether she realizes it or not. So, ladies and gentlemen, please put a round of applause for Dr. Miko Howard. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you so much, Mr. White. I really appreciate that awesome, awesome, awesome introduction. Uh, I, I definitely receive you speaking life over my future uh, and over my legacy. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to join uh, Transformation Greatness and the SBN Network podcast today. I really appreciate this invitation and I am looking forward to um, answering questions and really engaging the audience and being as transparent as possible. Um, and I just appreciate the honor that you just bestowed upon me, you know, I, it really has humbled me um, to us in a sense that I can see myself as being a doctor. So I appreciate you speaking that over me and even just confirming that in my spirit. I, I really appreciate that. Oh, a thousand percent, Dr. Howard, a thousand percent. So for the listening audience, if you can just tell them a little bit of who you are and what you do, a little bit of your background, and let's really jump into this thing here. Well, my name is Tamika Miko Howard. I am a native of the Mississippi Delta, born and raised. Um, I used to reside in Memphis, Tennessee, and then I relocated to upstate New York, to Rochester, New York, to pursue my education. Um, I come from some very humble beginnings in the state of Mississippi. Uh, I was a teenage mother twice um, out of wedlock. I was gang affiliated as a youth and as a young adult. Uh, there was a time when I only dated certain types of men and only went for certain types of lifestyles, so to speak. And um, I literally focused on wanting to outgrow my environment. I knew that there was something more to me than meets the eye. And I did not want to settle um, for what society or my environment at that time had um, bestowed upon me. I knew that there was something greater inside of me um, that I couldn't see yet, but I knew that I could eventually manifest it because I could never shake it. I knew that there was some greatness in me. And so I went ahead and relocated to upstate New York, where I only had one relative at that time. So when, when they say change people, places and things in order to make real change in your life, in order to see what you are really made of, where you don't really know anybody 
and you barely know the culture, you're learning everything from scratch and you have to walk in faith to get it done. That's pretty much what I had to do. I ended up getting baptized in upstate New York when I was about 23 years old. And um, I started you know, my educational goals. I went head in, head first. I, I did not quit. The first two years I got my associate's degree after I got baptized. I relocated my children to upstate New York with me about a month after I moved there and I just hit the ground running. You know, the sky was pretty much the limit. You know, there were challenges that I definitely faced, you know, in learning to navigate snow, learning how to drive in the snow, uh, learning the lingo. I was very country. My accent was totally different from a lot of the people in upstate New York. There were a lot of people there from New York City. And so there were language barriers. Um, that were in place. And it was a lot of diversity. And being from Mississippi and from Memphis area, you know, there's a lot of black and white experiences. But in New York, there was all culture. It was Puerto Rican, Dominican, African, you know, everybody. There was a melting pot. And I enjoyed that whole process of evolving into what we would call a New Yorker while continuing to hold my Southern characteristics as well. So it was a, it was a fine, fine line but it was definitely something that stretched me out of my comfort zone. The average person would have moved back home. Just trust me. They would have just gave up and went back to familiarity, but I was determined to achieve my goals because I had something to prove to myself. Um, I actually started working in the field of behavioral health and mental health around 2001 at a freestanding outpatient clinic. And um, I actually focused at that particular time on information technology in the healthcare setting. So like in medical records, this was back when the access database was just getting started. You know, this is before electronic medical records were actually in place like they are now. They were just getting started. And so I was a part of that process of scanning documents and, and uploading information into access database back then. And then over time, I wanted to come from behind the scenes and be more hands on and started interacting with clients face to face. And so I went to school and pursued my bachelor's in drug and alcohol studies and healthcare administration at that particular time. I became an intensive case manager and a drug and alcohol counselor for the Young Offender Reentry Program uh, for um, a program called Huther Doyle in Rochester, New York. Uh, I also went inside of the prisons back then and facilitated different groups. And I also helped those men and women to transition out of the jails and prisons back into society without reverting back to old behaviors that would actually increase the recidivism numbers. Because, you know, sometimes when people come out of jails and prison, they end up going back in. So my goal was to make sure that they had services and resources in place to keep them from going backwards. Wow. Um, I did a lot of work with de-escalating gang affiliated men and women um, in upstate New York area. Um, I focused on helping individuals with what we would call that hustlers lifestyle because some people are addicted to hustling itself. Some people are addicted to drugs Some people are addicted to sex Some people are addicted to gambling. People are addicted to shoplifting, but some people are strictly addicted to hustling, period. And mm -hmm. that particular mindset was also getting them into trouble and sending them back inside the walls. Right. And so I you know, focused on a behavior modification process to help change the mindset, to help them to tap into those executive skills, so to speak, and transition them over to another um uh, avenue or, you know, a job, a nine to five or some type of entrepreneur project where they can take those same leadership skills and do something more productive that was legal, so to speak. Uh, I work with a lot of people who had borderline personality disorder. Um, a lot of my clients back then struggled with thoughts of suicide or actually acted on suicidal attempts. Uh, a lot of my clients actually struggle with unprocessed or undiagnosed trauma. OK, and so I say all of that to say this. I'm currently working on my Ph.D. in marriage and family therapy out of North Central University, which is now National University. Nice. Okay? And then I'm also working to become a certified sex therapist. Right. I am also a licensed 
professional counselor out of Georgia. I'm board certified by two different boards in the state of Georgia as an advanced master addictions counselor. I'm also board certified at the national level as a master addictions counselor. And then I'm also internationally certified as an advanced drug and alcohol counselor. And then I also work for the Department of Transportation as a substance abuse professional. And outside of my private practice, I'm a federal suicide prevention responder for the Veterans Crisis Line. So anything dealing with trauma, suicide, domestic violence, sexual addictions, drug and alcohol issues, gambling issues, um, and then also couples and marriage and family related issues is one stop shopping for me. So when my clients reach out to me and they really dig into my background, they see that I don't have to always refer them to other professionals based off of their needs because they could come into my services for drug and alcohol issues, but then sexual issues come up. Right. But then trauma comes up. I don't have to refer them and they go out and tell their stories over and over again to these different professionals because that leads to attrition. People tend to drop out of programs and they have to keep telling their stories over and over again to different people. And so for, for me, it's one stop shopping for the most part. And I partner with you know other interdisciplinary teams, psychiatrists, psychologists for medication management and things like that, um, or for confirmation of diagnoses at a at a higher level, um, and you know things like that. I definitely, obviously, have a clinical supervisor um, who I can confide in. I'm a freestanding licensed professional counselor. I I literally serve. I don't have to have a clinical supervisor, but for best practices purposes. Right. Just maintain my ethical standards. Right. I have somebody in my life who holds me accountable. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So that's me in a in a nutshell. Um, I think that's me in a nutshell. Ah, oh, there's so much more to you, Doctor Howard, which meets the eye. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to Transformation Greatness, along with SBN, the Small Business Network podcast. We have a very special guest here. Coach Miko Howard, the trauma chief, aka to me, Dr. Howard. We're going to speak that into existence. With so much that you have accomplished, Dr. Howard, I guess the question in which I have, and you might have answered it, and if so, I definitely do apologize. But what really inspired you to really just go all in, right? Because I understand you mentioned as far as that you was a part of a gang and you went through, you know, certain periods in your life. And for most, I'm not going to say for most, but there are some individuals that would say, well, you know what? Hey, this is my life. It is what it is. Or what they do, they're turning around and say, OK, well, you know what? I'm not that person anymore, so mm -hmm. I should be good enough. But for you, it was different. You decided to go all all in and, and acquire so many different skills and certifications and be a part of the boards. My question is, what truly gave you that driving force to say, you know what? I'm going for it. This is this is this is what I want to know. This is what the people want to know because anything that you can give, I know there are individuals that's even watching this now or that's gonna watch this in the future. That's going to be in a situation where they may feel hopeless. They may feel like, well, I'm too old. I'm too young. I don't have Never the experience. I don't have the clientele, blah, 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 blah. Right. I agree. But me and you both know working with people, they have self-limited you know, beliefs and issues. Mm -hmm. So please explain, if you don't mind. The floor is yours again. Mr. White, I became who I needed as a child. I became who I needed. So in other words, I am my own rescue. Hmm. I've been through a lot of pain in life. I would literally have survived early childhood sexual abuse myself at the hands of a family friend who was fresh out of prison. And keep in mind, I did drug and alcohol and mental health. I provided those services inside of jails and prisons. But the first person who violated me was somebody who was fresh out of prison. Mm. Right? It's called deliverance. 
So that allowed me to be able to heal enough to go inside of the walls to help hurting people. Because it was no longer about me once I healed. You know, when you truly heal, um, you'll get to this place where you'll start to feel sorry for other people or you'll at least show some grace and some mercy towards people. Agreed. Right? And want to help to make things better for everybody. So having survived that experience was one. And then having grown grown up in a household um, with domestic violence, this is before um, the heaven. child of a Vietnam combat vet um, who received a Purple Heart, you know, for obviously missions that he survived over in the jungles of Vietnam, uh, but he didn't come back the same. And when you're in a place like the small town in Mississippi where I grew up, the resources are limited and people tend to not get involved. So what's said and done in your house tends to stay in your house. And so when you grow up in an environment where your parents are fighting and fussing all the time and you're taught to not talk, not think and to not feel at a young age, you grow into an adult with that same mindset. 100%. And so pretty much you're being taught to be numb. Pretty much you're being taught to uh, hold things inside and to act as if nothing's bothering you. And so you learn to not identify with your feelings. And that's a learned behavior. If you ask the average adult, how you, how you feel? How you feeling? Oh, I'm straight. I'm good. I'm all right. Those are not feelings. Those are not feelings at all. And so we're, we're disconnected in some way. And a lot of that is learned behaviors that goes back to our childhood. And so the sexual abuse is one, the domestic violence um, environment was another. And then I actually entered into a relationship with somebody who was violent towards me. Right. And then I had two small children at a young age. So I was a teenage mom. I was a statistic, joined a gang. I was the statistic. I had a guidance counselor who didn't even talk to me about college because I had a child in the 10th grade. And so those types of foundational experiences helped me to understand that there are people out there who've been tossed to the, tossed aside, so to speak. Society gave up on them, who have so much potential inside of them, who have dreams, goals, and aspirations, but they don't have the people around them to help pull that out of them, right? And so I turned that pain into passion, into purpose. And like I said, I became who I needed. And I tend to try to focus on not judging people because we all have a past. I don't care who we are. We have a past. Absolutely. Right? And I've learned that in this process of healing and even just dealing with some of these taboo topics, you know, of sexual abuse, suicide and gambling, you know, people don't like to talk about money issues and, you know, everything's such a taboo topic, but it's all happening. It's all normal, but we just don't talk about this stuff. A lot of people can relate to this stuff. And so for me, it's about creating an atmosphere that is conducive to the needs of the people who I'm helping and to make sure that they know that I'm not here to judge them to the point to where they will tell on themselves, so to speak. They, I, I could be their accountability person. I'm not going to throw them under the table. I'm not going to you know, sabotage their careers or, you know. I'm not going to do anything that's going to cause them harm. I'm going to make sure that they're not harming themselves, but I'm not going right. to intentionally try to usurp my power and authority right. over them. I'm going to empower my clients in the atmosphere that I provide for them. Um, and a lot of that is driven by some of the things that I went through where my needs were not met. And I think mm -hmm. that that makes me relatable. So hopefully that answer, answers your question in regards to the foundation as to why I do what I do. It's, it's thousand, more than a paycheck for me. A thousand percent. And you know what? Um, as you're explain, explaining or answering that question, excuse me, I'm just paying paying attention as far as like to your tonality and to your body language. And what I'm picking up is that there's a spirit of determination about you. There Absolutely. is a... I've noticed like when you speak, absolutely, you speak with authority, but it's not an arrogance. You, Thank you. Right. There Thank are you. there are individuals that I've come across and they can be very knowledgeable. Right. They will have 
all the tools and resources, but yet when they speak, it's so much of an arrogance and a selfish, and it's like almost like a shut up, listen to me. Mm. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. I got this in my years of experience and degrees, right? And, and it's pride. But what I hearing and what I'm sensing from you, Dr. Howard, is that you've been able to turn your pain into a purpose and you have such an assignment and a calling upon you and even and even though you're very humble but at the same time i get from you that you're a woman about your business and that time you take very very precious and you don't have time for games or for the nonsense or that other stuff is that inaccurate you hit the nail oh, right on the head okay i'm good i've mastered the art of detachment <laughs> i've okay. mastered the art of detachment Mm. Wow. 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 La la ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Transformation Greatness, along with SBN, the Small Business Network podcast. We have here a very special guest here, which is dropping some truth, some knowledge, some expertise. Coach Miko, the trauma chief, a.k.a. Dr. Howard. I know it doesn't say that yet, but it's coming. So cool. What I've been doing as, as well, Dr. Howard, I've been checking as far as the comments. That's why I've been looking down every now and then. So I apologize. And I see that we have here from Miss Indigo Nikki Devine Brown. We have here Cassandra S. Pickett, AKA Professor Pickett. They are putting down exactly on what you're talking about and they nice. are absolutely loving it. Thank you, and ladies. I, and I thank, thank you so much for that. I want to ask you this. And you probably have already. Have you done any speaking events, any conferences anywhere where you had an opportunity to really be able to share your expertise and your, your story and your mission? Because if you say no, I would be truly, truly surprised. I really would be surprised. Matter of fact, I, I actually have uh, with one of my mentors, um, Coach Mary hosts a women's network program where I actually was able to share my story and facilitate a workshop on post-infidelity stress disorder mm. slash betrayal trauma. Mm. Okay. And in that process, that platform allowed me to, again, go into great detail, but also educate listeners, educate those who are in, I think it was about 1600 people in attendance. It was a virtual conference uh, and it was, it was awesome. And wow. actually I have it posted. I have a 12 minute and a 35 minute presentation posted on my Facebook page Nice for anybody to see. I think it's public too, but I definitely did that particular conference in March. Okay. And, um, you know, back when I was in New York, I was ordained as an evangelist. And so and I actually started a jail and prison ministry and I also used to do liturgical dance and liturgical flag ministry. Uh, and I shared my testimony. And I'll be honest with you. Uh, I feel like some back then church people could not handle a non sterilized testimony. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in watering anything down because that's not how God got a hold of me. That's right. I, I'm a straight shooter. Um, don't, don't drive me there. Just fly me there. Let's, let's get to it. Um, I'm, I'm, when I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm not here to beat around the bush. I want to get what all that I can so that I can feel more equipped when I walk out the doors. Um, because my ministry is outside of the walls of the church. Right. Right. Um, and so for me, I've shared my story for years. It wasn't always received by everybody, but mm -hmm. I have a platform. I have a platform that allows for my story and some of the things that I share to be shared and received by the right people. So Absolutely. I found my tribe, so to speak. And if you notice on my Facebook page, um, sometimes on my profile pictures, you'll see, you'll see a random picture of me or whatever, and I will have my credentials listed. Correct. I know okay? that. And I do that because that's how people who click on my name figure out what's going on with me, because sometimes people will 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 gravitate towards you because of your looks because you have an attractive photo right okay right but when they click on the profile and start reading some of the data they see mm -hmm. what they need to see and then sometimes people will come into my messenger 
random people, you know, whoever can get through to me, they will come into my messenger and, and start having a private dialogue. And so for me, the nature of what I do, I don't want to have these conversations on my timeline. I want to respect your privacy. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And so that private conversation and messenger a lot of times happens because of the point of contact through the profile with just me listing my credentials. Gotcha. Gotcha. I wanted to ask you, I had a question in mind, but it kind of escaped me. So I, I guess I'm going to segue into this. So Dr. Howard, what is what is next for you? Like, do you have any, any projects, any conferences, anything in which that you have coming up in the near future? Because when we spoke last time and, and based upon your schedule, when you was telling me, I was wondering and asking myself, when does she sleep? <laughs> because <laughs> you do so much. And I think I told you too, that you need assistance because you remind me of my business partner, Dr. James McConnell. It's like, I don't know how he does it. I don't know if he even gets sleep, but he accomplishes so much within a 24 hour span. And just like yourself, do you even sleep? <laughs> I do. I promise you, I do. I promise you, I do. If I get off work at 1030 in the morning from the crisis line, I go to sleep till about two o'clock. If I don't have any appointments afterwards, Jeez. I'll get my I'll get about four hours of sleep then. And then I do some other things in the middle of the day. Okay. And then about seven o'clock at night, I'll go back to sleep and I'll get up at midnight to do my overnight shift. Wow. Right. And wow. then I have more autonomy. With my private practice, I can see people early in the morning, in the afternoon, or as late at night in the evening as I need to, or not at all. I can clear out a whole day and do absolutely nothing. But keep in mind, I'm working on my PhD in marriage and family therapy, so I still got to do homework. I got homework that's due tomorrow night. Wow. I'm going to have it done when I get out of church. Beautiful. So I just Beautiful. maximize my time. Again, I remove weapons of mass distractions from my life. And I choose my battles carefully. I don't let people just waste my time. I'm glad you said that too. I want to talk. I I want you to go more in detail with that, but I want to acknowledge our listening audience here. Mm -hmm. Cassandra, Cassandra S. Pickett, she has a great question. Okay. Dr. Howard, what processes, I'm sorry, what processes do you recommend for healing? For healing? Yes, ma'am. It depends on the individual. And you know, keep in mind, I'm, I'm focused on cultural competence when I answer this particular question. OK. Um, and please keep in mind, I identify as American Indian, African and Irish mixed together. Uh, and I embrace all of who I am. And that's just my maternal lineage. Gotcha. And so my response is going to be based off of a cultural competency perspective or just a cultural sensitivity perspective. First of all, we need to get to know the individual who needs the healing and what works for them and what okay. does not work for them. Okay. okay. Um, so, for example, if I am I have a client who is from India. From India. OK. And so we incorporate Buddhism. That's that person's religious beliefs that Absolutely. helps to ground them, that helps to relax them, that helps to, you know, get them to this place of calmness. Right. Mm -hmm. We also incorporate guided meditation mm -hmm. sizes. Right. We mm -hmm. also incorporate going outside into nature. Mm -hmm. We incorporate journaling and sometimes that journaling can be written journaling or actually video journals where mm -hmm. you're recording your face and you know today is january today is july 13 it's approximately 5 29 p.m eastern this is miko howard and this is how i'm feeling today and this is what i dealt with today and 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 this is what i'm wearing and this is why and just go into details this is yeah. your video journal of your accounts each day um, and then they get to also assess their facial expressions while they're talking about specific topics so that they can see how these particular topics impact how the world sees them. Mm -hmm. So when, gotcha. you're, when we're up in our heads thinking thoughts, we don't always focus on our facial expressions because some of us are not approachable just based off of our facial expressions. Very true. Right? Very and true. so 
when they're talking about certain things, they can see the facial expressions change. Or when they're thinking about something, they can see. It's like mirror therapy, so to speak. Correct. Um, so I incorporate yep. different things, you know, um, diet and exercise changes. It, it really just depends on the individual. Uh, and then I have clients who are atheists. Right. And so with that being said, we figure out what works for them. And sometimes it could just be nature. Sometimes it could be cycling at the gym. Sweating it out, going to the sauna. We figure out what's best for the individual. Again, what works and what does not work. And I just incorporate those things and, and, and depends on the type of therapy that I'm using with them. If it's cognitive behavior therapy, mm -hmm. I'm going to give them some type of psychoeducational homework assignment. Right. If it's emotional focused therapy, we're going to focus on the emotions. If it's solution focused therapy, we're going to focus on solutions. We're going to identify the problem, but we're not going to stay fixated on the problem. We're going to get to the solutions to help them heal. So it really just it really truly depends on the individual and what their needs are. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I'm just taking a look at, at, at the comments here. I'm believing, Dr. Howard, we're going to have to do a part two here because you're giving out so much value. And I just believe that this is just the tip of the iceberg. I really, really believe so. Yeah, I mean, the comments are still coming in. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So the trauma chief, mind elevation keys for all overcomers. What inspired you to come with that um, business name, because you could have went across and chose anything, but why that? Thank you. That's a great question. Uh, again, I'm from Mississippi, and my biological maternal family members are Chickasaw, Choctaw, and Cherokee. And come on now, Cherokee. My name, Miko, mm -hmm. is an indigenous word that means chief across all three of those cultures. Ooh. It's a male name. Mm -hmm. It's a man's name. It's a male mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. but it's also a universal name. And I truly believe I live up to my name mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and so with that being said, Mind Elevation Keys for Overcomers is an acronym for the word Miko. And I truly believe that I am an overcomer because I elevated my mind with the right keys, with the right tools, with the right resources, with the right mentors, with the right coaches, with the right um, counselors and support systems, spiritual, you know, pastoral counseling, whatever the most high used to help to lift me up and to lift me up out of a negative, pessimistic, aggressive mindset. Right. That's exactly what I use to become and evolve into who you see today. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for asking. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, again, the comms is coming. Uh, people are saying part two is definitely needed. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I totally, totally, totally agree. And see, My this pleasure. is what this is what this show is all about. As I was explaining to someone, and I can't remember who, because I speak to so many people. But what I but what I was mentioning to them is that I wanted my show to be different from a lot of other shows. Right? It's not about me. Right. And never has been to begin with. But what it is, is about men and women to have the stage and the opportunity to really be their true, authentic selves, to yeah. let to let others know as far as of who they are, what they do and why they're very passionate as far as on what they do. And that in itself, the confidence that it brings into another individual is beyond comparison, because when a person has a platform to be their true or think themselves without any kind of blame or judgment or condemnation, there's something very freeing about that. And just listening to you, Dr. Howard, and just the information that you've been given, I'm just like, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. And so... Continue the great work, Dr. Howard. I mean, this is just the beginning. So once you get your PhD, you'll probably shoot for something else. I don't know. Maybe professor of of, of another country. So I don't know. I don't know. But the <laughs> but you have that spirit and that drive. You truly are an entrepreneur in every sense of the word. Which now the question in which I have is this. 
What would you say, Dr. Howard, for someone that's maybe starting out or maybe that's thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, but yet they still have those self-limited ideas and beliefs such as, well, I mean, what Dr. Howard's doing is great, but I mean, I'm not as smart as her, right? I don't, I didn't experience as much as she went through in her past, or I don't have the credentials, or I would even know even where to start, or who would want to listen to me, or X, Y, and Z, fill in the blank. I would like for you, Dr. Howard, for about five minutes, I want you to take a look at the camera, and I want you to talk to that individual that may be coming to you. Maybe you had somebody like that in your office that felt like that. What would you say to him or her? A person with self-defeating beliefs that are hindering their ability to go after their goals and aspirations. I would say that pain plus non-acceptance of pain equals continuous suffering. And if you do not address the underlying pain, the triggers of that pain, that is keeping you anchored in your past, that's keeping you anchored in self-defeating beliefs, irrational core beliefs, self-defeating maladaptive behaviors and negative defense mechanisms that keep you stuck. When I say it's you against you and you're losing, you're losing because you're doing a disservice to the people who need you. Keep in mind, what I do is not even about me. It's not about me. You have to find just one person who believes in you. Connect to just one. You don't have to have a whole group of individuals. You need one. There's power in one. If you have a group, that's wonderful. But I would encourage you to get a coach, get a life a life skills partner, get a, a entrepreneur um, leader, someone who can develop you and mentor you into who you need to be. Somebody who has the attributes and characteristics that you know that you desire to be like, uh, where you're not losing yourself in the process because there's only one Miko. There's only one. There's my fingerprints only come attached to me. So don't lose yourself in the process of evolving and becoming who you desire to be, but take the limitations off of yourself because it doesn't matter what your past looks like. It can all be used. I just shared some very vulnerable things about my childhood experiences and my teen years that other people are not so proud of that they can't even disclose on any platform, let alone a major platform. I don't care who knows that about me because I allow God to get the glory with that story. So when you see me, you understand that if you see confidence exuding from me, there was a wounded little girl that had low self-esteem. There was a, a wounded little girl that has low self-worth, that had low confidence. And so I'm not cocky. I'm confident. I have confidence. My spirit is strong. And that's pretty much what you see because I was healed from the inside out. Right. And so all you need is one person to help you navigate this road to your target goals and your goals and aspirations. Write your vision and make it plain. It doesn't matter who's doing it. There's only one you. I'm in Atlanta. This market is saturated. However, there are billions of people in the world and there are 2,500 people moving to Atlanta every day. Right. So, hey, the market is still growing. I don't focus on who's doing what and who does it better than me and who's been doing it longer, and who's connected to who. I know who I am. And I know what I bring to the table and whoever comes to me and sits in front of me, I'm going to give them all that I have to help inspire and ignite and to help them to take off because there's people out there that only they can reach. And so I'll say again, challenge your self-defeating thoughts, your self-defeating behaviors, and those core beliefs that you have, because you are not only hindering yourself, you're hindering the people that you're supposed to be connecting to and pouring into. It's not about you. 
but you have to be trainable. You have to be coachable and you have to be teachable. If you're showing up thinking you know everything, you're not going to get anywhere anytime soon. You can start something, but you will not finish it at all. That's a given. You have to approach these things with humility. The day that we stop learning is the day that we die. I'm open to even learning from a four and five year old child. That's how humble I try to keep myself. I try to learn something new every day. And I mean every day. And when people give me constructive feedback, I try it on. Because that's the other thing. We have to learn how to accept and embrace the feedback. We all have blind spots. We all have a blind spot. And when people care enough about us to point some things out to us, we can't take offense to that and give that pushback because that person hopefully is coming from a place of love and, and inspiration so that you could become a better version of yourself. None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect, but I will tell you that iron does sharpen iron. But as long as you're trainable, coachable, and teachable, you cannot go wrong, but you have to be open to the process and being vulnerable is a part of the process because we don't have to be perfect. All we have to do is show up and we show up for ourselves every day to help unlock other people. My, my mission, my vision is to provide a safe place where I'm lending a hand up because not everybody needs a handout. We can coddle people and cause them to be defeated because I'm, I'm feeding you a fish every day. But you need to learn how to fish for yourself so that you can feed yourself for a lifetime. So if I coddle you, I'm doing a disservice to you. But if I grab you by both your hands and pull you back up to your feet and just help you to stand up and push you forward or pull you in the direction that you need to go, because I have your best interest at heart and you are allowing me to help guide you, you can't go wrong because one could chase a thousand, but two can chase 10,000. That's my answer. Ladies and gentlemen, you done heard 2024 keynote speech of the year came from Dr. Miko Howard. You know what? I couldn't have said it any better myself, and I'm not even going to try whatsoever. That was just so spot on. So, Dr. Howard, how can people get a hold of you? If they want to find out more about you, they want to connect with you, how can they get a hold of you, ma'am? My direct phone number, you can reach out to me through text, is 470-633-733. 7853. That's 470. I'm in Georgia in Atlanta. 470 633 7853. You can also find me on Psychology Today at Tamika Miko Howard. Same name on LinkedIn. I'm listed as Miko Howard on Facebook. I think that, you know, those are pretty much the, the key ways to get a hold of me. But if you text me, you're going to definitely get a hold of me instantly. And as soon as I'm able to respond to you, I assure you, I, I will get back to you within 24 hours. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned to you, this interview was going to be very inspiring. It's going to be very educational and informative. And I believe as the host, I have definitely have shown, I have given you guys the expectations. And of course, Dr. Howard has definitely delivered as advertised. There's going to be a part two to this, believe me. And I'm going to talk to you about that, um, Dr. Howard, in a few moments. But I appreciate so much of your time. I know that you're a very super busy woman. So for the fact we was able to make this happen, this is considered as like a as, as a dream interview, in my personal opinion. And so I thank, thank you for you. that. With that being said, this concludes another episode of Transformation Greatness, along with us being the Small Business Network podcast. I want to thank you all for hanging out with us here. It's about 45 minutes. Dr. Howard, thank you so much for your time, just for just sharing your wisdom and knowledge and expertise. And we definitely have to go ahead and do this again. So okay. uh, but, but before we go ahead and end it here, do you have any last words for the listening audience? Thank you so much for taking time from your busy schedules yourselves to join us. I really appreciate your listening ear. I appreciate the questions. I appreciate the feedback. And I definitely look forward to 
communicating with and connecting to those who may reach out to me as a result of encountering mm -hmm. myself and Mr. White on this particular podcast. I really appreciate you providing this platform, Mr. White, and literally inspiring me to just be my true authentic self, number one, and to share with your audience, with your followers. That means a lot to me. I really appreciate you trusting me with your platform. Thank you so much. I owe you. Absolutely. I owe you. Absolutely. No problem. And thank you once again. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're going to end this segment like we do all of our others here. And if what we stated on here either motivated, transformed, or inspired at least one person, at least one person, and may God be the glory, and we take no credit for absolutely none of it. Until then, you're all amazing. Please stay tuned because there's going to be some updates and details I'm going to be um, sharing with you all in the up and coming days. And by his grace and mercy, look forward to seeing you all on the next episode, which will be manana. Thank you, everybody. Have a blessed one.